Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wal udwana illa ala al-zalimeen, wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasiman kathira. So today we're going to be speaking about Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as I said when I started off this class, uh, he's not officially one of the abadila. Uh, because of his age and because of uh, the time period that he lived in, um, he doesn't necessarily count as one of the Abadira. But as we said, there are many, many, many Abdullahs in the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, amongst the Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu is from a status perspective, from a virtue perspective, um, probably higher than all of the rest of the Abadira, okay, than the other four, just from a standpoint of fadl, from a standpoint of virtue. He's probably better than all of them. I mean, we could say that almost certainly that he's better than all of them. But again, he died um, over 30 years before all of them all, all of them did, and so he didn't live to um, narrate as many hadith. He didn't live through the fitan and so on and so forth. So his his influence from a political perspective is very very little, okay, as opposed to the others. But whenever you read a hadith narration or whenever you see in tafsir that Abdullah said something. Without it saying Abdullah ibn anything, it's talking about Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu. Okay, so that kind of shows you his status. That if it just says, and this is frequent in Al Bukhari, by the way, um, where it'll just say that Abdullah said something without saying Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So that automatically shows that the status that Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu occupies in Islam is even, is even much higher than the others. Now, what's so amazing about that is, is his status from a lineage perspective and as far as where he was from and as far as his appearance is concerned and as, as far as his wealth is concerned, he was less from a worldly perspective than all of the rest of them. His parents were not Sahaba, well his mother becomes a Sahabiyya, but his father is pretty much unknown, okay? He was sold into slavery it seems as a young child. Um, he doesn't have a noble lineage, he's not from Quraysh. Um, he's from the tribe of Al-Hudayl. The Hudayl tribe is a tribe that has a bad criminal history. Okay, they're known for being, you know, they're similar to the tribe of Ghifar. Abu Dhar al Ghifari radiallahu anhu, he came from a tribe where people used to, you know, where people were known for robbing and things of that sort. So Al Hudayl, they're also a tribe with a criminal history. But Al Hudayl also, they're very eloquent in the Arabic language. And this would help Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Um, if you guys read the biography of Imam al Shafi'i rahimahullah, his mother sent him to live amongst the tribe of Hudayl. Uh, for over five, six years, just so he could learn the Arabic language properly. So these were the people who understood the Arabic language most. From an appearance perspective, he certainly doesn't have a dominant appearance. We're going to talk about that as well. From a wealth perspective, he's the poorest of them all. He's from the Mustadha'afeen. He's from the weakest of them. But subhanAllah, he, he beats all of them out in terms of his fadl, in terms of his virtue, which shows you what Islam was able to do uh, for people. So inshallah ta'ala, just so you guys have his full name, his full name is Abdullah ibn Mas'ud ibn Ghafil al-Hudali. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud ibn Ghafil al-Hudali. Alright? His father is Mas'ud ibn Ghafil. His mother is Umm Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. <laughs> That's all we know about her. Alright? She has no name that we know of and no history. Just uh, Ummi Abd. She's the mother of the slave. That's her nickname. That's her name actually, subhanAllah. That's how her name comes in the seerah um, of the Prophet Sallallahu as well. Um, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he was, he was born in, in the area of Mecca. Um, and again, he's from Al Hudayl. Al Hudayl lived on the outskirts of Mecca. And his family uh, put him, you know, basically sent him off to be a shepherd when he was a very young boy. When he was seven or eight years old, he was sent off to learn how to be a shepherd, to learn how to be. Ara'i. And subhanAllah, this is obviously what the Prophet ﷺ said, that every Prophet at some point in their lives was a shepherd, was a Ra'i. Because being a shepherd teaches you certain things about responsibility, subhanAllah. It puts you in a position where you have to take care of your sheep, you learn leadership skills, you learn responsibility, you learn patience. So the Prophet ﷺ, he said every single Prophet at some point of their lives ended up being a shepherd. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu is learning a very positive thing at a very young age. He's learning patience and responsibility and amana, trust and leadership and so on and so forth. Um, his nickname before Islam, and it would continue throughout Islam, is 
ابن ام عبد ابن ام عبد all right the son of the mother of the slave all right rasulullah sallallahu would call him that and he would be called that for a long time so that's what so many times you find the prophet sallallahu alaihi refers to him this way this is what he was called before islam after islam his kunya is abu abdurrahman okay and as we said in books of fiqh, hadith, tafsir, if you see Abdullah without anything else, it's talking about Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now he was a shepherd of a particular, um, a particular man, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'it. Uqba ibn Abi Mu'it would become one of the greatest enemies of Islam. All right, so he was a shepherd for Uqba ibn Abi Mu'it um, at the age of 13 years old. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, one of the descriptions of him is that he didn't used to interact much with people. He lived amongst the sheep of Uqba. Uqba had a lot of sheep. He had a lot of animals. He was a very rich man. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu was just tending to his animals all the time. He didn't used to mix with people much. All right? He used to just kind of do his own thing. And also one of his descriptions is that um, he was burnt by the sun. Okay, كَأَنَّهُ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبَادِ He was like one of the dark, dark, dark-skinned Bedouins because he was just constantly out there in the sun taking care of the animals, never used to take shelter and so on and so forth. Um, the way that his Islam starts is very beautiful. Okay, it's a very beautiful story. Subhanallah. He, he meets Rasulullah not knowing that he's the Prophet. This is when Rasulullah first receives the message of Islam and he's taking Abu Bakr as Siddiq into confidence. So, what the Prophet used to do, he used to take Abu Bakr, they used to walk to the outskirts of Mecca and they would talk. So they talk about the revelation, they talk about da'wah, they talk about what the Prophet is going to go through and so on and so forth. So once the Prophet was walking with Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and he comes across Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu as a 13 year old boy taking care of these animals, taking care of these sheep. So the Prophet him and Abu Bakr go to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and to show you how much Abdullah bin Mas'ud doesn't interact with a society that's so close to him he doesn't know who the Prophet ﷺ is. Now, in Mecca, everyone knew who the Prophet ﷺ was. Right? This is before Islam. He's a Sadiq al Amin. He's the honest, the trustworthy one. Everyone knows who the Prophet ﷺ is. Abdullah bin Mas'ud is so disconnected from society. He has no idea who the Prophet ﷺ is. He has no idea who Abu Bakr al Siddiq is. He just sees these two men coming to him. And they say to Abdullah bin Mas'ud that we are travelers and we're thirsty. So if you could provide us just a little bit of milk, then we'd, we'd, we'd gain some energy and we'd be better off. We can move on and, and, and we'll leave you alone. So he says it to Abdullah bin Mas'ud in a very polite way. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu was, was captured by the beauty of Rasulullah sallallahu and the beauty of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, the smile of the Prophet sallallahu the character of the Prophet sallallahu So he says to Rasulullah sallallahu he says, look, you know, I wish that I could, all right? I really do wish that I could. But he says, لا أملكها. I don't own any of this stuff. Okay? I don't own any of this stuff. So, and he says to the Prophet ﷺ, he says, وَلَكِنِّي غُلَامٍ مُؤْتَمًا He said, I am a young man that's been entrusted with these people. SubhanAllah, you automatically remember the story of Abdullah bin Umar anhu and that shepherd. Abdullah bin Mas'ud anhu says, I wish I could help you, I wish I could give you something, but you know, I've been, I've been entrusted by uh, Uqba bin Abi Mu'it not to give anyone any milk or not to give anyone anything from this. I have to take his permission. I don't know if he'd be okay with this. Okay? So the Prophet ﷺ, ta'ajjab. Rasulullah he liked his answer. He was impressed by his trustworthiness. All right, and the Prophet ﷺ, you know, how many ahadith do we find from the Prophet ﷺ about amana, about being trustworthy? All right, Rasulullah ﷺ says, لا دين لمن لا أمانة له. There is no religion for the person of no amana. If you don't have amana, you don't have deen. لا دين لمن لا أمانة له. So the Prophet ﷺ, when he says that, he doesn't argue with Ibn Mas'ud and say, come on, we'll pay you, I'll give you some money, which was very common back then, right? Tell your owner that, that someone, that a wolf attacked it or something happened to it. Rasulullah ﷺ doesn't do any of that. The Prophet ﷺ, he says to him, okay, fine. He says, اِئْتِنَا بِشَاتٍ لَا لَبَنَ فِيهَا Bring me one of your animals that, that doesn't produce milk. All right, I, I understand you want to be trustworthy. You don't want to bring me one of the animals, one of the goats or the sheep that produces milk. Bring me one of them that doesn't produce milk. That way, you know, nothing is expected of it anyway. Abdullah bin Mas'ud anhu, he's curious why, 
right? He doesn't understand why the Prophet ﷺ would even ask for something like that. But he says, فَجِئْتُهُمَا بِشَاتِ I went ahead and I brought them a sheep that, had, that, that did not produce any milk. He says, فَوَضَعَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَدَهُ عَلَى ذِرْعِ الشَّاءِ The Prophet ﷺ, he put his hands on the udders of the, of the sheep. وَقَالَ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ And he said, in the name of Allah. So he, so he said, فَإِذَا بِهَا يَمْتَلِئُ لَبَنَا He says, all of a sudden, this, you know, the milk started to flow from it. Right? And the Prophet ﷺ, he asked me for a bucket, so he brought the bucket. Rasulullah ﷺ, he filled that bucket. Now Abdullah bin Mas'ud is saying, you know, he, he's, he's just watching this in absolute amazement, not knowing what's going on. He says, فَحَلَّبَهَا The Prophet ﷺ himself, he got all of the milk out of it. And he said the Prophet ﷺ, he grabbed that, that bucket, he took a little, uh, you know, a little cup, he says, فَشَرِبَ He drank from it sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ثُمَّ سَقَى أَبِي بَكِرْ And then he gave it to Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu drank as well. And then he took a cup, وَسَقَانِي min, And he gave it to me and he told me to go ahead and drink. Now Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, you know, this is nothing, he didn't betray his contract with, with the owner of these things because again, this was an animal that didn't produce milk anyway. So he says, so I drank from it as well. He says, and I'm just looking at the Prophet Wasallam, and he says, ثُمَّ عَادَتْ كَمَا كَانَتْ He said that the sheep went back to the way that it was, meaning it went back to not being able to produce milk again. And Rasulullah and Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu were talking, they were drinking from the milk. And then as they, as they did that, they thanked Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then as he was about to leave, as the Prophet was turning away, قُلْتُ يَا عَمْ عَلِّمْنِي مِنْ هَذَا الْقَوْلِ الَّذِي قُلْتُ My uncle, teach me these words that you just said. So he said, تَبَسَّمَ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ The Prophet وسلم, he smiled. فَمَسَحَ عَلَىٰ صَدْرِي And he wiped my chest, he put his hand on my chest. وَقَالْ إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ مُعَلَّمٌ You're a trustworthy, knowledgeable young man. You know, he praised Abdullah bin Mas'ud رضي الله عنه. And subhanAllah, it's as if he's making Abdullah bin Mas'ud curious. It's as if he, he's, you know, he, he didn't answer the question. He didn't say that I said Bismillah. He just said, إِنَّكَ غُلَامٌ مُعَلَّمٌ That you're, you're a trustworthy, knowledgeable young man. And Rasulullah صلى الله عليه he walks away. So Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu says, as soon as him and Abu Bakr walk away, he still doesn't know who he was. He says, he went to Mecca. Okay? وَبَدَأْتُ أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُمَا And I started asking people about them and I started describing them. So he said, I went to, he just happened to run into Al-Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Al-Abbas was selling itr, he was selling perfume. Okay? So he said, I described these two men that I saw. I said, he looked like this, he looked like that, so on and so forth. And Al-Abbas, he said, that's my nephew, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And if you want to find him, you can go to Dar al-Arqam and you can find him there. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he went running to Dar al-Arqam. As soon as the Prophet sallallahu saw him, Rasulullah sallallahu recognized him, he was happy. And in fact, subhanAllah, the narration say that Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that, that says that the Prophet ﷺ was telling him about how impressed he was by Abdullah bin Mas'ud, you know, taking that stance when he did. And so as soon as Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu anhu sees him, he asks him, you know, what are you calling to? And the Prophet ﷺ tells him about Islam and he says, I want to join. So the Prophet, so he asks how he joins. Rasulullah ﷺ tells him to say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. So he, re- he repeats after the Prophet ﷺ, he takes his shahada and he becomes the sixth person to accept Islam. The sixth person to accept Islam is Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This, this whole narration actually is found in Musnad al-Imam Ahmad. And uh, when he becomes Muslim, you know, he's the sixth person in Islam, uh, he actually gained a nickname. Okay, and his nickname was Sudus al-Islam, one-sixth of Islam. All right, because it was very strange that a person like Ibn Mas'ud radiAllahu Taala Anhu was joining this religion. Because at this point, who had become Muslim? The Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr, Khadija, right? Maybe a couple of other people. So how is it that this man, out of all of them, that they don't even know and and they they don't even recognize him? They just say Sudus al Islam. That's the sixth. Of, he's one sixth of Islam, and that title stuck with them. Subhanallah, Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah. He said that's a miracle because if you take Abdullah bin Mas'ud's role in Islam as a whole. It's equal to more than one sixth of Islam. His role in Quran, his role in Hadith, his role in Fiqh, he is one sixth of Islam. You know, SubhanAllah, what an honorable nickname that he is. 
Sudus al-Islam. He is one-sixth um, of Islam.